Oh, King. Already. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is the last, the 12th day of the trip and the last day of the trip. And we are in Alabama exploring a pretty new area for both myself and Graham in hopes of seeing some milk snakes. But uh, Graham has to leave on, is it tomorrow or the next day? It's the, it's the next day. Tomorrow's Monday. So we'll probably do a little bit of herping in Georgia tomorrow, but this is the last day on the road for the trip. So let's see what we can get into. A worm snake. He's pretty. Well, there's our first Alabama snake of the day. A very, very pretty Midwestern worm. He's got a little bit of that, uh, that western worm look to him, but just not quite as vibrant. But uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of these, so I'll let him go. King snake. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Dude, that's a good snake. He's shedding too. Actively? Yeah. Now oh, we got another one of these guys who is actively shedding as I was pulling him out of the grass. His skin started coming off, so look at that belly. That is insane. Doesn't even look real. Very, very nice. Big Adult Black King is our first snake of the day. Hopefully this won't be the only Lampropeltis we see, but if it is, I mean, that's a pretty good one. Very, very big. And I think the only Black King we've seen in Alabama on this trip. Last time we were here, we only got milks, which is not really a problem, but it is kind of surprising because these are much more common than milk snakes in, in Alabama, at least. What a great snake. Hopefully the uh, the capture clip came out pretty well. I was just walking along, kind of walking over towards these bigger rocks right here. And I heard him moving in the grass and looked down and was able to grab him before he got into a hole. All right, dude, back to your grass. I'm assuming he's gonna go under that rock right there or towards it. Yep, he went right under it. These dudes have been pretty abundant today. This is a long-tailed salamander. We've seen quite a few on this trip. Ah, I don't know how many I've showed, but they have been very abundant. Graham just spotted a garter snake. That is beautiful. That oh, might be one of the better garter snakes I've ever seen. All right, guys, we are one turn away from being back to my house. We just did the long drive from North Alabama to uh, where I live here in Metro Atlanta. And uh, it's 55 degrees right now. We're driving down a road that I drive down five times a week, if not more. And in the road was this guy, a beautiful corn snake. It's 55 degrees. And uh, that's probably gonna be the last snake of our actual journey. Graham and I are gonna herp tomorrow, but wow, that thing is beautiful. I'll get a little bit of better video of it at home. We're gonna photograph it and then we'll bring it back and let it go here. All right, we're back at home and uh here's a look at this snake real quick before we take some pictures and go let him go but uh really really surprised to see this guy it's super cool out and this is a really great looking corn snake too look at that not only is it really cool outside it's 55 degrees but it's also the high today was only like 68 67 degrees so it never even really got warm and it's supposed to dip down into the 40s tonight so really just a puzzling time for a, a healthy adult snake like this to be active. But I mean, the snake didn't get this big by being stupid. So I'm assuming it knows something we don't. But yeah, it was a pretty slow day to end the trip on overall. Definitely highlighted by that one black king snake we found and a couple of other things that I did not get much video of because I was hoping and expecting to see more. But uh, yeah, Graham and I are gonna go flip some tin tomorrow. So we're gonna photograph this corn snake and we'll let it go. And uh, we'll see you guys in the morning.
Good morning, everybody. We are back in Georgia, and uh, Graham leaves tomorrow, so we're going to try to make the best of our last day of uh, full herping day, at least, of the trip, and to do a little bit of local tin flipping here close to home. So we're gonna hit a few spots, and hopefully the snakes will be out. Oh, Keen! Already! Yeah. Yo! <laughs> Dude! First look piece! At the belly on that <laughs> snake! Dude! There's wops. There's wops! You can drop it, you can drop it, you can drop it. Wow! Dude, that's nuts! King! Dude. Oh! Nice! That's another gravid female. Where's their boy at? Sir? Ah! Come here. Get on there. Don't <laughs> attack him. You don't want the smoke, I promise. All right, you can drop that. All right, so two king snakes and this racer at this first stop. This guy is super blue and uh, very, very unhappy we've caught him. So I'm just gonna let this guy go and we'll get a better look at these king snakes. Well, that was kind of ridiculous. Uh, first stop of the day, Graham and I got two king snakes and a racer. And we still have a little bit to flip here. On the way to where we're really going to be herping today, this one is just taking off. That is crazy. So this is the first one we flipped. This is definitely a very, very healthy gravid female or ovulating female. I would assume gravid this late into the spring. She is super healthy. The iridescence on these snakes is nutty. Look at that. All right, here's the second one. This one's got a little bit of a messed up face going on there, but hopefully that'll clear up when she sheds. It's gonna be cool to have these in the same episode as that big black king we saw yesterday, just so you can see just how different these snakes are. These are females, pretty small females for Eastern Kings. And that black king we saw yesterday was one of the biggest I've ever found. And it was about the same size as these girls. So just to get some context, if we were to find a male Eastern King snake at this spot, it would probably be quite a bit bigger than these ladies are. All right, we're gonna put these girls back and we're gonna move on to our main herping spot for the day, which, like I said earlier, I can't imagine it's gonna be this good, but you never know. All right, Graham's gonna let this one go. All right, there's the other one. Great start. Let's see what else we can get into. There has been quite a bit of rain here in Georgia since we left. And uh, hopefully that will mean that the snakes will be excited to be out in the sun today because it's finally not raining. And uh, it's very, very wet everywhere. I mean, the water level is kind of ridiculous here right now. So we're gonna wait for it to cool off just a tad and then we're gonna go flip the rest of our tin for the day. This is a very handsome Fowler's Toad under a rock. Well, we've seen a couple of water snakes around this little pond and we actually just saw a mink, which is crazy cool for this part of the country. Like I didn't, I think that might be the second mink I've ever seen in Georgia. And uh, there were a couple of Nerodia hanging out around where the mink was. And here's one just chilling in the grass right here. Kind of a weird place to see one. Look at this loggerhead. I'm assuming it's a loggerhead. He's a, uh, He's quite a ways up in that tree. <laughs> well, as I was concerned about, we've been flipping tin for several more hours and have not seen anything, at least under tin. We did see a couple Nerodia basking, but uh, we're gonna go try maybe one more spot to end the day. If we see anything there, fantastic. And if not, we might be done. We'll see. Oh, we can also flip the tin at home, but we might end up doing that tomorrow instead. All right, everyone, it's the next morning. Uh, I have to take Graham to the airport here in a little bit, but we're gonna flip the yard tin and see if there are any last minute snakes waiting for us. So let's get to it. 
The mants are screwing things up. Oh, erythrogaster. It's a good looking snake. You got it? Yeah. Hello. I'm gonna put it down. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Why are you flinging poop? What's up? Oh, oh my goodness. My Ugh, it just keeps coming. Are you done? So last time Graham and I flipped that tin, there was something a lot more exciting underneath it, but today we got a big poopy red-bellied water snake. Um, you can see he has pooped all over himself and all over me. All right, here you go, poop master. Well, it's been pretty slow so far. We've just had uh, one worm snake, one red-bellied water, and this uh, ring neck here, which I think we've seen this guy a couple times before in this stack. He's got a pretty distinct belly pattern. Bong! <laughs> oh, a garter! Water snake. I wonder if that's that same big one I saw earlier this year. Because uh, they're not common here. All right, y'all. Well, if you recall, earlier this year, we found what I think was the first garter snake I've ever seen here in the yard under 10. And I'm assuming this is the same snake a couple months later under a different sheet. Looks very similar. Another big, healthy adult female. So we'll uh, get a look at her and then we'll put her 10 back. Well, the must to snake ratio is definitely a little bit screwed up this morning between that... Uh, that plain belly, which absolutely unloaded on me, and this thing. There's been a lot of poop and not very many snakes. It's kind of gross, so I'm going to go take a shower, and then we're going to take Graham to the airport. But I think that's probably going to be the last snake of the day. We've got a couple more things to flip, but it doesn't seem like stuff's super active, so I'm not going to count on it producing. But All right, this guy's going home after two weeks. <laughs> We've had a heck of a trip, but uh, it's time for uh, Graham to get to experience the joys of the Atlanta airport once again.